Welcome uh, to the session on uh, computing software laboratory and uh, this is experiment number two. Now in this particular experiment uh, we will try to validate uh, the Nyquist sampling theorem. Hopefully you know what is uh, the definition of the Nyquist sampling theorem. Uh, now this uh, Nyquist sampling theorem states that uh, the sampling rate of a signal uh, should be at least twice the highest frequency content present in the particular signal. For example, if I consider a pure sinusoidal signal which has only one frequency, then uh, from the sample of this uh, sine wave, uh, we can once again reconstruct the signal in the time domain if the sampling rate is greater than or equal to twice the frequency of the sinusoidal signal. Now the Nyquist theorem is applicable for any signal in practice uh, but in this particular experiment uh, we will demonstrate the validity of Nyquist theorem on a sinusoidal signal which consists of a single frequency. Now to start with uh, let me once again create a new M file and uh, Obviously, we have to provide the number of samples. Now, uh, let us consider uh, the number of samples to be say 101 and this is uh, stored in a variable say capital N. So, capital N is equal to 101. So, the number of samples will be stored in that variable and uh, we have to specify the amplitude of the signal as well. Now in order to do that what we can do is uh, we can also uh, take the input from outside which we did not explode in the last day. So let us consider uh, this particular exercise. So it will be something like that. We are using the command input and uh, you have to uh, write down the text over here like enter the amplitude of the sinusoidal signal. So once this program is run, uh, then this particular input will come into the screen and accordingly uh, you have to provide the corresponding input. And uh, let me just specify uh, the frequency. So it is also in that same mode like enter the frequency of the sinusoidal signal. You know the sinusoidal signal is having a single frequency and the genetic form is like a sin omega t plus phi where phi is the phase difference. And we need to specify the sampling rate, the rate at which you are going to sample the signal in the time domain so that ultimately from the continuous signal you can get what is known as a discrete time signal. So initially we have a continuous signal like a sin omega t or a sin omega t plus phi and from that we have to get what is made by a sin omega n plus phi. So this is the sampling frequency, enter the sampling frequency. So it is something like that, you have to specify this one. And now uh, we have to represent the time variable. So here it is not a continuous function because as we have already mentioned in the Nyquist theorem, uh, we are trying to check whether the Nyquist theorem is valid for no or not. So since the actual signal, the continuous signal, sinusoidal signal will vary continuously and in the last session we have already mentioned that MATLAB can only deal with some discrete variables because it takes into account the matrices and the vectors and you know that the number of elements in the matrix is finite as long as the number of rows and columns are fixed or finite. 
So for a sinusoidal signal, for example, if I consider a sin omega naught t plus phi, so this is defined over a range, say from 0 to capital T or 0 to say T dashed. And within this particular range, we have a number of values. I mean, the sinusoidal signal varies continuously. But it cannot represent this continuous variation in this particular software. So what we need to do is that we have to take some fixed number of samples. So we don't have a sin omega t. Rather, what we have is a sin omega nt, small n into capital T. That means instead of having the signal being represented for all time instants, small t, we are going to represent the signal at some discrete intervals. t is equal to small t is equal to n into capital T, where capital T is known to be the time duration between the two samples. And 1 upon capital T is known as the sampling rate. So capital T is known as the sampling duration and 1 upon capital T is known as the sampling rate. So ultimately, the sinusoidal signal can be presented in the form of A sin twice pi f, that is omega. Omega is given by twice pi f. f is the Hertz frequency and omega is the angular frequency. So uh, let me just write it down over here just like this. So before that, uh, let me put the variable t. Uh, it varies like this, 0 with an increment of 1 and the maximum value n minus 1. So we have all together n number of samples over here. And this y, the signal can be represented like a. Then you have sine so let me just show you sine of omega t sine of omega into t plus phi so for the timing let us now forget about the phi let us assume that phi is equal to zero so that is the normal form of any sinusoidal signal a sin omega t where the variable t in general can vary continuously but whenever we are going to represent the sinusoidal signal in a matlab software then uh, we cannot afford the continuous variation of the time. So that's why what we have done is we have made the variable t discrete. So in line number 5, what we have written is t is equal to 0, colon 1, colon n minus 1. So it will create a vector of size n. And the elements are 0, then 1, then 2, then 3, and up to n minus 1. So the length of this particular vector is n which is equal to 101 for this particular case. And this is a discrete variable. So this a sin omega t can now be represented like a sin omega into nt or nts. So as you know, omega can also be represented like twice pi f. So let me just mark it like that, twice pi 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 into f, f is the corresponding Hertz frequency, which I have already mentioned. So what I can do is I can also change this particular message, like enter the Hertz frequency, so that you can uh, discriminate between the Hertz frequency and the radian frequency. So enter the Hertz frequency of the sinusoidal signal. So twice, so instead of writing omega, what I have written like twice pi f, that is the Hertz frequency, capital F, and t is replaced by n into capital T. So n into capital T is nothing but the new T. And what is this capital T? That is nothing but 1 upon Fs, where Fs is a sampling rate as you know. So ultimately, this can be modified, this expression can be modified like twice pi F into Fs, twice pi uh, F divided by fs that is the sampling frequency and the sampling frequency is also mentioned in hertz so it will be better to write like enter the sampling frequency in hertz that's over so now we have y is equal to a sine twice star pi star f minus f by fs star t and that's all and we are interested to have the variation of the signal. Now last day we have considered the plot for those different signals using the common stem. 
assuming that these signals are discrete in nature. Now that time I have also mentioned that you can also draw the continuous signal by using a command which is known as plot. So if I use the command plot, then the discrete signal will be shown in a continuous manner. So obviously there will be certain interpolation involved. So if I write like plot t comma y, this will plot the signal y against the variation of the independent variable t. As you can understand here you have two variables, t is the independent variable which varies like this 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 up to n minus 1 and y is the dependent variable which depends upon the variable cap small t. So plot t comma y. So this will plot the signal and uh, we can incorporate uh, this uh, conventional grid on function over here and uh, we can also represent the corresponding leveling let x level is represented by say f is equal to or I can represent like validation of Nyquist theorem. That's all. Now let us uh, save it like experiment number two. Let's make it experiment number two, save it and then run the program. So you have to enter the amplitude sinusoidal signal. So let me enter like five. Enter the Hertz frequency of the sinusoidal signal. Let it be say two, two Hertz signal. And let us enter the sampling frequency in Hertz. Let it be 50. So these are the three inputs required from the user. And once it is over, then you find that a pure sinusoidal signal can be obtained like this. So since we have a zero phase, so it starts from this. So complete cycle, second cycle, third cycle, fourth cycles. And the validation of Nyquist theorem, that message has come over here. So now uh, let me make some ornamental change over here so that it looks nice. And let me now run the same program with a different settings of f and fs. Now let me consider uh, the amplitude to be same say 5 and the hard frequency in the sinusoidal signal let it be say 30. So last time uh, we have uh, mentioned the Hertz frequency to be 2 and the sampling frequency to be 50. So the twice the Hertz frequency that is 4 is much much less as compared to the sampling frequency. So we can reconstruct the signal from the samples itself. This time we are uh, keeping the Hertz frequency to be 30 and twice the Hertz frequency which is 60 is not less than 50 rather it is greater than 50. And it is expected that uh, these particular settings of the parameters uh, will not give the corresponding waveform properly if I keep the sampling frequency constant to be 50. Then what we have is something like that. So it's quite apparent this is not a sinusoidal signal. So you have certain variations but this is not at all a sinusoidal signal. Because we have used a sampling frequency to be 50 and the signal frequency to be say 30. So if we have a signal frequency to be say 30 then the sampling frequency should be much much greater than the twice the sampling frequency. So let me once again run the same program. Uh, let us use uh, the amplitude signal to be 5. Uh, this time let us consider the Hertz frequency to be say 10 and say sampling frequency let it be say 100. Once again 
this condition is validated. I mean, twice the signal frequency is much much less as compared to the sampling frequency. Now you can see that a sinusoidal signal can be obtained. Since uh, the signal frequency has been enhanced from 2 to 10, so we have more number of cycles. Last time we have 4 cycles I believe. In the first attempt we have 4 cycles because that time the corresponding frequency was 2. So we have less number of cycles and this time uh, the corresponding frequency is 10. If I just once again go back, uh, the corresponding frequency, hertz frequency of the signal is 10. So we have more number of variation because we have kept the time window constant. We have kept the time window constant that is 100. We can also change the time window just like this. Instead of having 101, we can also have like say, say 501. And let us uh, increase the uh, a hertz frequency to say 20. Sorry, uh, let us uh, change the hertz frequency to say 20 and uh, let, let the sampling frequency to be say 200, 10 times large. And once again, run the same code. So the amplitude let it be 5, same. Hertz frequency let it be now 20. Okay. And uh, the sampling frequency let it be say 10 times uh, the input signal frequency. At least it should be 2 times, so let it be 10 times, say 200 and let us check. So although not clearly visible, but uh, we have a sinusoidal signal because the peaks are fixed. Here you can see that uh, the peaks are fixed. Since uh, we are observing over a span of 500 samples and the signal frequency is relatively large, this time the signal frequency is 20. Uh, so the variation is something like that. We have much dense variation over here. Otherwise, we can do the same thing. One second, we can run the same program, keeping the signal frequency to be say this time, let it be say 5 and we are using a sampling frequency, say let it be 50. That is the 10 times of the signal frequency and let us check. So we have a variation like this, little bit uh, less dense this time. So what we can uh, observe from this demonstration is that if we select the sampling frequency to be, or what I can do is uh, I can also uh, reduce the, uh, the time span, let it be say 101 and uh, let us, this time let us change the amplitude also, doesn't make any sense, although let's make it 5. Uh, let make the um, I mean the sampling frequency to be say 50 and let us check. So ultimately what we have is this particular waveform, a sinusoidal signal which looks something like that. So here you can see that uh, you may argue that this is not exactly sinusoidal because uh, this uh, here you find that uh, the top of the sinusoidal signal is flat which is a kind of a flat top sinusoidal signal. Now it happens because you don't have any sample at the peak of the sinusoidal signal. Because as I have already mentioned, using the command plot, what we have, we have the discrete samples and using the command plot, the discrete samples are interpolated to obtain the corresponding continuous variation. Now this flat top sampling means you don't have the corresponding sample value at the particular location. Now for every value of t, you have such certain value of y. For t is equal to 0, you have certain value, t is equal to 1, you have another value, t is equal to you have another value. And accordingly, for every integer values of t, you have the corresponding values for the signal itself. But if the uh, signal frequency is selected in such a way, uh, here you find that the signal frequency is 5. So it's an odd number. So that's why it is not coming. So uh, let us now uh, show you the same thing with an even number. Let's make it an even number. Let it be say 4. Let's make the hertz frequency to be 40. Uh, this time also we find that okay, uh, there is a, a flat top kind of thing. The reason is that behind this uh, flat top kind of sampling is now uh, once we have the sinusoidal variation like this, we have the values only at 
t is equal to 0, t is equal to 1, t is equal to 2, t is equal to 3, t is equal to 4 and so on. That means for all possible integer values. Now here the peak occurs somewhere which is not exactly equal to the integer value. So therefore this particular setting cannot track the peak. So since the peak is mixed, so therefore you have a flat kind of sampling. So that can also be visualized if you just uh, instead of uh, writing plot, if you just uh, use the command stem, that can be better visualized like this. If you run the program and let it be 4, let it be 40, then it looks something like that. As you can see, you have this number of samples. You have those 100 samples over here, 101 samples over here and one half has been represented by means of those 5 to 6 samples. So you have these two samples, you have these two samples and you have these two samples. And using this you have to interpolate so that ultimately you have a sinusoidal signal. Now once you have this intermediate sample over here, then it can be shown in a much better way. For example, if we uh, do the same exercise uh, with uh, what you have started initially with a Hertz frequency of say 2 and say sampling frequency of say 50, so it's much much larger, it's almost 25 times larger, 50, uh, then we see that in the stem plot we find that this peak value of 2 is obtained. So everywhere you find this peak is obtained as one of the samples which was not the case in the last time. So since we have these two samples so the corresponding interpolation function approximates it to be a straight line but this time you have a peak so you have a close observation and you have a close approximation like a sinusoidal signal. So from this entire demonstration what we can ultimately take home is that for any signal uh, whose uh, frequency is uh, or bandwidth is given by a particular frequency if the signal contains multiple frequencies uh, then the signal can be reconstructed from its samples if it is sampled at a rate twice the highest frequency of the signal. Now with this I would like to conclude this presentation.